The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. The white-tailed deer is America's favorite big game animal, and white-tailed deer farming is the fastest growing segment in the American agriculture industry. Our program's mission is to dive into the world of deer farming and discover why tens of thousands of Americans compete to create the biggest bucks in the world. And by the biggest bucks, we don't just mean the size of the antlers. The financial investment opportunities produced even on small parcels of rural land will blow you away. Join me as we discover how whitetail genetics, deer auctions, animal husbandry, and so much more drive the deer farming industry. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. My name is Matt Lassine and I'm the owner of Vera Ranch and we are located in Columbus, Texas. We are a uh, whitetail breeding operation. We also breed exotics, but mainly focus on uh, big frame, wide, typical uh, whitetail bucks. The deer industry is really great. At this point, we've been in the industry long enough now to really work on fully developing our own genetic line and people are coming to us with the look that we've created. It's, it's really been fantastic. So my name's Trey Staff. I'm the ranch manager here at Vera Ranch. I've been in the deer breeding business probably right at 12 years. Uh, I've started with Vera from the very beginning and it's been amazing to watch this place grow. So the staff here at Vera is made up of four girls and myself. I mean, I couldn't ask for better people to work with than the four girls that I have that pretty much take care of our day-to-day -day routines in the pens, bottle feeding, they're a lifesaver. There's nothing they can't do. It's just an all-around great team. Hi, my name's Amber Bolt. I am the herd health manager here at Vera Whitetails. My job is to basically make sure all their needs are met and they're staying happy and healthy. So here at Vera, not only do we grow big whitetail, we have a exotic breeding facility as well. We do some breeding here in the pens as well as out in the pasture. Here in the pens you can see we're in our Inyala pen along with Sitatunga in the pens as well. You can also see we do have a very big sustainable herd of Attics, Thompson gazelles, pretty much all your gazelle species we breed here at Vera. And then along goes all the way up to Eland. We have a breeding pair of Eland and a calf. A lot of our exotics are out in the pasture and we do a natural breeding with them. And we do a lot of selective breeding though here in the pens with the Sitatunga and Yala. Is, uh, those are the two species we really focus on for they are uh, the most intriguing to us here at Vera. All right, so here we are at the one-year-old pen. And how many bucks you got in here total? Uh, we've got right at 19 bucks in here. Yeah, we're all of them born here? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, well, they're good-looking deer. I mean, you've got, uh, I mean, across the board, they're just pretty. They're not they are not too big. Exactly. And, and what I mean by that, I mean, this kind of sounds odd, but uh, sometimes I think that deer farmers can grow deer too big. And what I mean by that, we have to look at who the final buyer is of these deer and where these deer are going. And when you start thinking about stalker deer, a lot of people are buying these deer. Most of the deer in the deer farming industry go as stalkers. Okay, so the people are becoming more and more picky, and they should be when it comes to buying stalker deer. 
They don't want stalker deer that are too big. Correct. And that's the reason why I'm looking at these deer. These are like the perfect size yearlings. So, and they're really uniform. And there's a couple of standouts in here. Like, who's that guy right there? I mean, he is beautiful. Uh, that buck right there is a yearling we're calling Rookie. Okay, golly, he's, symmetrical. He's got Four. real good tines. I mean, just the total package in my opinion. Who is he out of? He's actually a major league yearling. Oh, he's really? Major league and then on the bottom side, he is uh, Uno Ancho. Okay. Over Monarch Supreme, mm -hmm. over Jewel. Wow, well, he is a gorgeous buck. And that guy right there, who is that? So that other bigger guy that's in here, he's a buck that we're calling Verdict. He's probably got the longest tines out of all our year. Oh yeah, I mean, he's got 11 at 12 inch. I'd say close to 12, yes. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, got some good time length. And pedigree on him? Uh, he's actually a Toxic son. I've really? got, Toxic has been throwing a lot of time length for us here. Okay, so those of y'all who don't know who Toxic is, as a yearling, what was Toxic, 37 inches? He was wide? right at 36, 37 inches wide. I mean, a just, a, just a beast. Deer. And so, well, that's good. So Toxic has uh, got a, a nice yearling on the board. And these guys right here, I mean, they're they're relatively gentle. They're not they're not too gentle, but they're I mean, they're they're calm and they they you can tell you spend a lot of time with them. The the pen here, I mean, that's a pretty good sized pen. It's got a lot of shade in it. Lots of shade. Uh, in my buck pens, I like to keep a lot of shade, a mm -hmm. lot of trees. Keeps the deer more calm. Well, right now it is the second week of August, and these deer they're starting to dry up. Most of them are starting to dry up. I know you've got one buck that we were talking about that uh, we're fixing to show them to you in a little bit. He was a, a, a late bloomer and he's a two-year-old and he's probably gonna be the biggest, prettiest two-year-old you've ever laid your eyes on. We'll show him to you later on. But as far as these deer in here go, are any of them for sale? Uh, yes, everything is for sale. Really? Okay. I Everything's for sale at the right price. Uh, there you go. <laughs> okay, so if, uh, and, and like I said, this is the second week of August. If you're interested in coming to Varro Whitetails, let me tell you, this place is real convenient for those of you in South Texas. It is just west of Houston, a little over an hour. Yes. Sir. It's uh, just outside of Columbus, Texas. So it's between San Antonio and Houston, and it's real convenient to get to. If you want to come out here and take a look at deer, I would recommend coming out from about the third week of July all the way into the first week of September, wouldn't you think? Yes, sir. Okay, so give them a phone number they can call to try to schedule an appointment to come on out. 979-733-6304. Or you can email me at tstaff at veraranch.com. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors. Rafter P Construction. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. Okay, so you always hear us on the show talking about stalker bucks. And uh, we're in a pen right now with some stalkers. So tell everybody who they are. So these guys are some leftover three-year-olds. We released all these two-year-olds last year as mm -hmm. two-year-olds. Okay. And so we held some of these guys back to grow them out as three-year-olds. So these bucks will be turned out to spread their genetics on our hunting property to better our genetics and make it a self-sustaining piece of property. I get it. Well, that guy right there is fat, fat. I mean, look at him. What, what is his name? He's a little bit spoiled. That guy right there we call Sleepy Joe because all he does is sleep and eat. He, you can uh, tell he does He weighs about 350, I'd say, on the hoof. He is a <laughs> huge deer. He's only three? Yes, sir. He's a three. Okay, so all these deer, you know, you keep hearing us on, on the show talk about stalker deer, stalker deer, stalker deer. The purpose of that is to bring these genetics that are here at Bar Whitetails and other deer farms and introduce them, reintroduce quality genetics on a piece of property that eventually will be hunted. And there's no question about it. Eventually, the descendants of these deer, they will be hunted. But right now, what they're doing, they're growing them up. And so customers will wind up coming to a deer farm like Bar. They're gonna come over here and they're gonna take a look because they want these great genetics on their stalker program. Yes, sir. okay. And so as far as uh, these customers that come out and buy stalker deer, let's address that. Okay, when is the best time for them to come? and how does that whole situation work out? I mean, we can't deliver stalker deer past a certain date. That's just a state regulation. That's about mid-September. Mid-September is normally the cutoff date. Uh -huh. Here lately in the stalker business, the stalkers have been going very fast. Uh -huh. And people have been 
when they're two year olds, they want to put a deposit down for them. They want to assure that they have these bucks for next year because stalker bucks are getting fewer and fewer. We're fixing to show you some two year olds, okay? That you're gonna see the difference between, take a look at these guys, these stalkers, these are three year olds, and you're gonna take a look in a moment at some two year olds, and you're gonna see how much they grow between that second year and third year. But the deer business, in my opinion, in Texas, is as good as it's ever been right now. Exactly. What do you think? I agree 100%. With you. I mean, we, we are experiencing a boom in the deer industry like we have not in a long, long time. And so if you've got a small piece of property, you're interested in white-tailed deer, you maybe you got livestock, you think of trying to do something else to make some money, the deer business is a really good way to make some money on a small piece of property because business is good. Now we're going to jump over to two-year-old pen after the break, and you'll see what they look like. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Big Time Whitetails and Exotics, LE Fence, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and by New Dart. Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Deer Genetics. All right, so this is a two-year-old pen right here, and uh, you got a bunch of deer in here, but Varro Ranch has got uh, two types of facilities. You've got a, a certified? Yes, sir. Which is where we've been showing you so far, and these are non-certified. We're enrolled in animal health, but uh, we're in year two of this facility. How many bucks you got in here? Uh, in this two-year-old pen, we've got 25 bucks in here. And folks, you can take a look at these guys and tell the difference, body size and antler size across the board from the three-year-olds we just showed you, but take a look at them, and. I'll tell you what, there's one giant standout. Who is that? That is actually a buck we're calling Objection. Mm -hmm. He is a judge's prodigy son. Okay. And then on his bottom side, he's Freeze Brand, Sudden Express, Shadow. Okay. And I think he's going to go at least over 30 this year. Yeah, he is an absolute beautiful deer. I mean, look at that look on him. What I love about him, he's just, he's so wide. He boxes in his mm -hmm. time length. He's okay. an awesome two-year-old. I want to tell you, when you go to a Texas Deer Association, TDA sale, or you, you get anywhere where the deer breeders hang out, you're going to see Trey, but you're also going to see Matt. Now, Trey runs this place here for Matt. Matt's the owner. There's another deer in here that I've heard about and I am super excited to show him to y'all. The reason why is because he's got the right genetic makeup. Yes, okay, sir. he's an SS. So yes, sir. tell everybody which one he is and we'll tell you why this deer is so special. So this guy, his ear tag 20-65, we're uh, calling this guy straight flush. A phenomenal two-year-old in my opinion. Yep. He's and got the right markers, he's got the right look. Okay, and what he's talking about markers, they've been able to identify certain genetic characteristics that are less susceptible to chronic wasting disease. And SS is the characteristic that all the breeders are wanting now. And that's an SS right now. Now, now the thing about it is, this is the non-certified pen. If it was a certified pen, I guarantee you, he would have had people lined up to Interstate 10 to want to buy that deer Pretty immediately. Close. Yes, sir. Okay, I mean, because that's how special that deer is. And the only difference is, is about 300 yards between certified and non-certified. Non -certified. <laughs> that deer right there, semen is available. If you're a deer breeder, or you're thinking about getting the deer breeding business, the whole industry is sliding that way towards genetic breeding values. And that deer right there is, he's got like the perfect numbers. Perfect. You know, I've always said that it seems like 95% uh, of the deer, maybe 98% of the deer uh, in our breeding programs all go to stalkers. Yes, sir. Okay. And so as you look at these two-year-old bucks out here, think about that. There's only a couple in here, and we've pointed them out to you, that are really going to be used for breeding. Okay, one is because he's got the right pedigree, I mean, and look, I mean, look at him. The other is because genetically, he's got these invisible, perfect traits that what we want to breed towards for the genetic breeding values. But the other guys, for the most part, these guys are all going to stalkers, right? Yes, sir. 90% of these bucks will end up stalkers. And as you can see out of these two-year-olds, it's the big, clean frame, tall-time deer. And that's and what people are looking for. A lot of these two-year-olds out of this pen 
are sired by one of our biggest breeder bucks we had, Legacy. I mean, he's been throwing the tine length for us like crazy. I mean, Legacy was absolutely beautiful. That's what the people buying stalkers, they're looking for. They're looking for this typical look like this. I yes, mean, sir. across the board, these deer are absolutely beautiful. And so uh, if somebody wants more information about coming out here and taking a look at them, I'll give, <laughs> give them your number. Uh, they can get a hold of me at 979-733-6304. Now, these are two-year-olds, but uh, when we get back from the break, we're going to show you the breeder bucks out here, okay? There are not many breeder bucks out here, okay, because they do a lot of uh, AI work. But the breeder bucks, the cover bucks that you have are phenomenal. And uh, there's one in there that's two years old, and he's going to blow your mind. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Union Hill Whitetails, the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, and the North American Deer Farmers Association. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube. Now some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence. All right, hey guys, this is Ron with LE Fence. Back here, we're getting ready to stretch some net wire so we can get it put up before uh, call it quits for the evening. So right here, we've laid out the net wire on the ground, uh, attach it to our stretcher bar, and then we stood up some of our fence down the line so that when we pull it, it's already kind of standing upright. So now when we hook it up to our tractor and start pulling back, we start going until we get some good resistance on this net wire. Don't want to be too tight as we're working in some deer pins. You don't want a deer or a good buck running into it, breaking the neck or getting his antler stuck in the fence. So we keep a little bit of play in it, not much, just a little bit. And then after we get some good tension on it, we're gonna go ahead and start doing what we did over here on the gates and we're gonna cut one strand at a time and we're gonna cut off the stays and then tie the wire back around the pipe. And then we'll be done with this portion of the fence. All we got left to do are some gates. So we're gonna turn this one big deer pin into two little deer pins and good to go. Thanks guys. All right, so it's the second week of August, and most of the deer that we've shown you so far, have, uh, their, their growing is just about done. Yes. And take a look at it, it's been hot and dry in Texas this summer. But most of them are done, except for this guy right here, and he's a two-year-old, and I promise you, he is a head-turner. Right there. Look at him, and he is not close to being done, as you can tell. I mean, he's all bulled up. He's got golf, I say he got golf balls on top of his horns. Yeah, and all the pretty up tines. I mean, he's absolutely spectacular. So what the, what's the deal? How come all these other deer we've been looking at are, you know, they're almost done, but he's not, was he a late born or something? He actually, he was the very last deer to drop his antlers last year. As a yearling? As a yearling. Okay, but look at him now. Yeah. Holy smokes, you, got, you have to have a name for him. That guy we call Dash. Dash? Yes, sir. Dash is actually our biggest legacy offspring that we have. So he goes back to legacy He goes too. back to legacy as well. If you put a picture of him and his father side by side, I mean, they're almost identical. That's cool. So pedigree wise on the bottom? His mama is triple crown, okay. walking tall, kingpin, P601, super good. Out of the park, they're beautiful. Yes, sir. Beautiful, okay. He's in here with a couple other breeder bucks. Tell us about them. So these guys are three-year-olds. These are bucks that we use to cover after we do our AI. One of these bucks we call Poncho. Okay. And Poncho is a big Winchester son. Big box frame, beautiful, tall tines. Yep, and how old is he? Poncho's three. And uh, I guess the other one's gotta be Lefty. That's Lefty. <laughs> how did I guess? How'd you guess? <laughs> and how old is Lefty? Lefty's a three-year-old as well. Okay. They were some of the first fawns that we had born here when Vera started. Really? Yes, sir. Okay, they are beautiful. They're so doggone gentle. And this pen right here, when you come to Vara and you come to their facility, they've got a gorgeous facility. Okay, and they've got a cool staff that's working all the time. You're gonna see them doing different stuff. But this pen right here, where the breeder bucks are, is right next to the main office. So it's kind of like showcased perfectly. You come into the main office, you look over there and go, there's Poncho and Lefty <laughs> and Dash and 
it's like I want to see more and so I think you all have done it smart. They are beautiful deer. Now, were they, they were all born here? Yes, all these deer were born here. Okay, did you use uh, Poncho and Lefty to cover last year? Yes, sir. They actually covered, Poncho covered right at 15 girls. Okay. And then Lefty covered about the same. Okay. How do you keep them so gentle? We work with them. From the day they're born, I mean. Spending time with we them. We just spend time with them. Yeah, and, you and you'll tell. see, the, the girls that I have working for us here is phenomenal. The girls that are working here, they are phenomenal. So much so that one of them, Amber, I, <laughs> I tried to hire her. Okay, things didn't work out. But the staff here is unbelievable. But uh, it's a team. That's the thing. It's We're the, a team and a family. Yes. I mean, if you go to the TDA and you go in there and you walk in that big room, there's all these other deer breeders in there, and a lot of really good guys, but there's only one Vara Ranch. And you go over there and there's a family. I mean, you see everybody sitting around and they're, they're family. I mean, so if you want more information about coming out here and seeing the deer that they have, if you're a rancher in Texas or have a ranch in Texas and you're looking for stalker deer, or you're a deer breeder and you're looking to up the game with deer breeding, you can do so by contacting Trey over here at Bar Ranch and, uh, and they've also got a really good website, but give them a phone number. Uh, you can reach me at 979-733-6304. When you come out here, uh, you want to come out probably the last couple hours of the day when it's uh, nice and cool in the evenings. Okay, that's when the deer seem to be cooperating the best. And uh, you're going to see some really big, beautiful deer. And uh, make sure and meet the staff that uh, takes care of the baby. Because I'll tell you what, without the staff, I don't know how you'd be able to do it. Oh, it's, I've done it and it's, it takes a toll on you, I'll oh, tell yeah. you that. Trey, thank you. Thanks for having us out. Thank you all for watching. If you're watching online, make sure and subscribe right now to the Deer Farming Channel. If you're not watching online, head on over to YouTube and watch the Deer Farming Channel. I'm Keith Warren. We'll catch you next time. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.